sing to Jesus, is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory all alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion. Out of every nation has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, not as orphans are we left in sorrow now. Alleluia, he is near. Faith believes nor questions how. Though the cloud from sight received him, when the forty days were o'er, shall our hearts forget his promise? I am.
Christ and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Power and riches, wisdom and might, and honor and glory to Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forever. come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation, sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom. Freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Let us begin our morning with prayer. Almighty God, your Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for all of us. Receive us in our prayers this morning for all the world. And in the end, bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We may be seated as uh, Deacon Elaine reads our scripture this morning. A reading from the book of Psalms. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a sound. God is King over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power 
for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all and all. The word of the Lord. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. That was pretty sad. <laughs> Come on, people, wake up a little bit. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. A little better. Uh, this is Ascension Sunday. Uh, we, are, we have confirmants coming at uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, so my, my sermon is actually using the Ephesians text that uh, Deacon Elaine just read, uh, thinking about our confirmants. Um, so we won't mention any of this text in there, but this is the traditional Sunday right before Pentecost. Uh, with the idea that as uh, Jesus uh, leaves the earth to rule at the right hand side of God, the Holy Spirit comes down to the earth uh, to be the presence of God among us still, uh, even without the physical presence of Jesus. So that's, that, that's the, the rhythm of the church calendar year. So. And uh, there are two ascension stories, only two in scripture, one at the end of Luke, and then Luke wrote a second ascension story at the beginning of Acts, because Luke wrote both of those, so. This is the one at the end of Luke. And then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, they're all to be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand all those scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name for all nations. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with the power on most high. And then he led him out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. <clears throat> and they worshipped him. And then they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So, when I was a... Did I never turn myself on? No, I have never turned this thing on. It looks pretty on my face, but it works even better when I click the on button. Sorry about that. Okay. That's probably why you didn't respond so well when I said uh, the Holy Gospel. Is that right? Uh, when I, was, on a, uh, when I uh, was a youth minister and led youth mission trips, and <clears throat> uh, we'd have late night uh, worship services, and, and uh, the song I would always have us sing, at least as one of the songs of those late night worship services, was uh, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. And I did that for uh, three reasons, I think. One, it's a simple song, uh, and the words are simple, and, and, and I knew all the words, which is a bonus too, right? And the second one is it's a little bit dramatic, which is kind of nice for hormonal teens, you know, on a mission trip to get kind of a dramatic song in there. And, and the third one was, believe it or not, it's one of a few songs that when I don't have any kind of accompaniment with me that I can like start us out nearly at the right spot and 
and, and, and hopefully we'll be able to, to go forward. Because right? it's not a hard song to sing. It's, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. This is the traditional crowd, so you, you might not be aware of that song, but it's a, it's a pretty song. In this text from Ephesians that uh, Deacon Elaine read, uh, that's where this song uh, inspired from. And so I studied Ephesians this week. First time I'd, I'd studied this text before, and I was surprised to learn that the song tells us that, that we want to see God, to open the eyes of our hearts so we can see God. And that's not really what Paul has in mind in here. Paul has in mind that open the eyes of our heart, Lord, so that we can see like God. We can see what God sees is what that is. And, and what God sees for each of us is, is hopefulness. Listen to those words again that you heard Elaine read. So that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which God has called you. You may know what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of that great power. Open the eyes of my heart. God wants for each of us so that we can see our lives like God sees our lives. When I was a kid, we would take uh, uh, two weeks in the summer for vacation and, and my parents would drive us up to northern Ontario and we rented a cottage up there uh, outside of Peterborough, um, Ontario. And in and, and, and this cottage, it would be a long trip to get up there. So my mom would diligently prepare right for for us before screens could entertain your kids in the back seat. And uh, uh, so Keith and I would not destroy each other on the trip. She would buy us comic books and books and, uh, and uh, game books, you know, word finds and things like that. And one year she bought us coloring books, which was a disaster because we left all the crayons on the back ledge underneath the hot sun and it was a goopy mess that was a stain on that blue ford for the whole time we owned it my dad was not pleased and one one year she brought us these uh these uh this book that you ripped out some red lens glasses out of them and and when you put on the red lens glasses an ordinary page you know became extraordinary and you could see uh different gifts in the midst of an ordinary page and, and, and they were puzzles that when you, when you took page one's uh, gift with the red lens glasses and page two, he added them all up at the end and, and he got some sort of surprise. We, we loved that, right? And, and, and honestly, that's always the vision I have when, when open the eyes of my heart, Lord, is sung, is, is this idea of, of God fitting us with some red lens glasses so that we can, we, we can see what God sees behind each of our lives. We could see our lives as, as God sees it, especially when it's hard to see gifts, you know, in the midst of darkness and despair on those longest days that you can see something behind us. Paul is clear. When our hearts are enlightened, <laughs> there's hopefulness behind each of our stories, that our stories end well. Listen to the words he uses in here. Glorious inheritance, immeasurable greatness, great power. The words kind of jump for joy. And, and I know what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I get to heaven, you know, all that great stuff is going to happen. Uh, in the meanwhile, I got to slog through all the crap of life right now. But Paul wants to say, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, those gifts that are waiting for you at the end of your story, they're a part of your story right now, too. If you just had eyes to see them. So that even when we do have those darkest or longest days, we might see something hopeful behind them. A gift with our hearts enlightened that will help see us through. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. 
so how, how do we do that? How do we, how do we get our eyes opened like that? It's, if only it was as simple as going to Walgreens or CVS and, and buying some red lens glasses and, uh, and going out into the world. And, and, and this is, Paul is clear in the scripture about this too. What he wants us to do is, is he wants us to get in the way of God. <laughs> As one commentator said this week, that, that if we could just find a way to, to, to get in the way of God, our eyes will be enlightened. Uh, and getting in the way of God is a way of uh, what Fred McClid said in our Wednesday Lenten services, that, that turn of phrase that he made that I just love and I still play with in my head. We need to get entangled with God, entangling our life with God. And the way we entangle our lives with God to Paul is clear. It's by staying in the church. It's by staying in the community of God's people. It's by attaching ourselves to the head, who is Jesus, and becoming the body of Christ, who is us, the hands and feet. That's how we get entangled with God. Most of you here <clears throat> became entangled with God by parents or godparents that, that, that helped you start in your life of faith. Parents and godparents that helped you see gifts that you didn't know you had underneath. Especially on those darkest days. Those long days. I, I, I have a memory, clear memory of fourth grade of being upset because my brother, who was a year older than me, all my friends wanted to play with them, you know, because a fifth grader is so much cooler than a fourth grader. And so I, I was crying on the couch, and my mom came alongside of me, and she comforted me by telling me what she saw that I couldn't see. She said, Carl, you're going to be fine making friends. You've got a good sense of humor. You, you let other people play the games they want to play, and you play with them without wanting your own way. Those are things that are going to go a long way way for you. I can see what you can't see. Immeasurable greatness. Great power. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Later when I was 20 years old and, and, and getting married and starting a family and, and getting a job and and I was anxious by all that. My, my father took me to Arby's and, uh, and sat me down. And, and I was freaking out. And my dad smiled and said, Marion Page is going to be the best thing you've ever done. You're ready for this. You're going to be fine. Immeasurable greatness. Great power. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I can see what you can't see right now. And as we move through our life of faith and, and we get entangled in the church, we get ourselves in the way of God, there's all sorts of other people then that can help us in those roles, that can help us see when we can't see, whose enlightened hearts take a vision on our lives and see those hidden gifts in the midst of them. When I was in Circleville, there was a, a 40-year-old man who died unexpectedly on the operating table for a, a routine heart catheter. Just a crazy thing. Left behind a, a, a devastated wife and, and two boys, one in middle school and the other nearly graduated from high school. And, and the church rallied around this family in, in a way that was good. And... Uh, and, and one uh, man stood out for me in the midst of that. He was already the boy's scoutmaster. And, and he took a special interest and care for the youngest of those two boys. And, and, and through uh, that boy's troubled teenage years, filled with normal teenage angst, made even more difficult by this sudden loss, this, uh, this man was beside him the entire time, encouraging him. Giving him hope in the midst of his despair that, that lasted for years. Helping him see what he couldn't see. Because he had an enlightened heart by the power of the Spirit. And, and was sharing it with him in those moments. And that young man is now 
in his 30s with kids of his own and part of a church and and I hope giving those same gifts to others around him. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Glorious inheritance, immeasurable greatness, great power. That's what God sees when God sees us in our lives. And that's what we can see for our lives and for the lives of our neighbor. So listen to Paul. You want to have God's eyes? You want to see the world as God sees it? Then you need to start by getting entangled with God. You want to get entangled in God? Then you you need to attach yourself to Jesus, whose head is, and we are the body. You want to get in God's way? Then then you need to become part of the body of Christ, the, the hands and feet of God in this world, working out the salvation that God has planned, not just for the end of our stories, but that every one of our stories ends well. You need to be part of this body, sharing the gifts that you have with God's eyes, giving hope to your neighbor as your neighbor gives hope to you when your eyes are dim. You want to find that glorious inheritance, that immeasurable greatness, that great power. Then stick around here and find that hope. I was at a wedding yesterday and I was talking to an 80-year-old relative of mine whose daughter had died back when he was 25 years old. And he started weeping as he was telling the story again of his four-year-old daughter dying when he was 25. And in the midst of that story, he said, I've never forgiven God. And I've never been able to be part of the church again. And my heart just broke for him in the midst of that pain that he was still carrying. The pain of a parent losing a child that will never go away. And my heart broke that he was carrying that pain all by himself without the help of brothers and sisters in Christ to carry him in his weakest moments. You want to have the eyes of your heart enlightened? (laughs) Then stay here. Let your brother and sister see for you when you can't see. And carry them when they need to be carried. This morning, we're going to have six confirmants come forward, and they're going to claim their faith. They're going to join us fully. They're going to become brothers and sisters in every sense of the word for each and every one of us. They want to be Christ's body. They're they're longing to be hands and feet. They want what you want, to be entangled with God and to have them fill their lives with hope. They are being fitted today with some red lens glasses in order to see those gifts that can be hidden in the midst of our world. In order to be people who spread hope, who announce the good news that jumps for joy of glorious inheritance, immeasurable greatness and great power. And you know how they got here? They got here because of parents or godparents made promises for them to see in them what they couldn't see in themselves. And they got here because brothers and sisters in Christ in this place came alongside of them. Throughout the years, Angela Cromer and Sally Wood and Janine Smith-Hughes teaching them and in Sunday school and, and, and Mandy Young and Stacy Stout and Joe Clements and Andy Moore and others teaching them in confirmation. And they got here because of Sunday school and VBS and children's choir and youth ministers and 
children's ministers and, and associate pastors and 1180 being remodeled and, and made into a dedicated youth space. And even if not one of you did any of those ministries in the 15 years of these kids' lives, I'll bet you you put coins in that offering plate that made all those ministries happen. We are a part of their lives. And they are a part of our lives. And God has opened their eyes on their best days to see the goodness of God. And maybe someday with their eyes wide opened with God's heart, they will help us when our eyes are dim to see what God sees. A glorious inheritance, an immeasurable greatness, a great power. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. to see you I want to see you open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see
Tyler didn't ask me to sing that with him. I was, I was auditioning and everything. Why don't you stand up? It is Ascension Sunday. Let us remind ourselves of, the, of uh, this faith that God calls us to, reveals to us in, uh, in the Trinity. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Join with me in prayer. Holy God, we give thanks for the waters of baptism that call us into life. We ask that you open the eyes of the hearts of each and everyone praying this morning so that they can not only see you, Lord, but see the world as you see it, to see our lives as you see it. Help us, Lord, this morning live lives of hope, even in the midst of despair. Send beside us your people to see in our lives what we can't see, but you can. And Lord, send us beside our neighbor to serve them, see for them, carry them. We give thanks for our six confirmands later on today. We give thanks for the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ who have helped raise them in faith. We give thanks for their parents who have kept their promises at baptism. We give thanks for a church who has provided a place for them to grow and to become part of the body of Christ ready now to be hands and feet working out your salvation in the world. Bless this church, Lord, as we continue in the mission that you have for us. Bless us in all the ways you can, Lord. We pray this morning for those who are sick or ill. We pray especially for Kimberly Berry Ryan, Rob Ryan, Meg Reidler, Susan Franklin, Jennifer Solt, Ralph Portier, Ryan Thomas, Amanda Williams, Cindy Watkins, Jerry Amarot, Ron Racy, Dolly Bagel, Penny Dotson, Sherry Holton, Jean Limbers, Chris Sakla, Paul Blackburn, Margaret, Althea Pleasance, Nick Sudamak, Brooke Cook, Gerard Kobai, Brigida Whitman, Bill and Lucy Peters, Barb and Angie Lepler, Sue Malloy, Beth Bauman, the family of Barb Bauer, Kirsten and Justin, and others named aloud now. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord, so that we might see you and see like you. Amen. peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's love, God's peace with one another this morning. We have a special gift. We have uh, Marshall Fisher. He's going to lead us, uh, lead us in an offertory. We're not taking, uh, passing an offering plate in the midst of this pandemic, but we do have a box out there. Uh, if you're online and, and, and worshiping with us, uh, we don't have Becky to, to give you the link <laughs> to giving online, but hopefully you can find that at our website at messiahluther.net. And uh, hear what I said in our sermon. We've got plenty of resources to help you if you need help in the midst of life. Amen. As any architect, um, engineer, or builder will tell you, you need to have a firm foundation upon which to build your home. 
given what we've all experienced over the last year and a half, uh, especially, I offer up this song as a reminder to us that Jesus is our living stone upon which we build our home. Let's go. 
Let us pray and give thanks for these gifts. Lord, we give thanks for this wine and bread that's been set before us by this congregation. We give thanks for the wealth that's been shared for the ministry we're about. We give thanks for the time that's been given in the week that's passed and the time that'll be given in the week ahead. Help us, Lord, be faithful with all these gifts, announcing the good news of the glorious inheritance and the immeasurable greatness and the great power that you see for each and every one of us. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting. Your faithfulness endures from age to age. We praise you this morning for the creation of the heavens and earth. We praise you for the saving earth with the waters from the flood. We praise you for bringing us to safety, each and every one of us. We praise you for bringing us confirmants and children who help enlighten our faith. We praise you for the honor of walking beside them. We praise you for keeping your promises, Lord, in the midst of our lives. A promise today to meet us in this meal, as Jesus said on the night he was betrayed, where he took bread and he broke it and he gave thanks and he said, Take and eat. This is my body and it's been given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we are proclaiming the very mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come fill our lives with hope. Come, Holy Spirit, come open our hearts to see with your eyes. Come, Holy Spirit, come hold us, redeem us. And send us forth to be your people. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. you've released the white wafer from the clear plastic on top there. Hold it up there. We'll take this together, this good meal. The body of Christ is given for you. Amen. Release the grape juice. I had there on Alder Guild. Notice all the purple grape juice that I've got all over me now. So be careful to release it, especially if you're wearing white. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen, indeed. Lord, fed and nourished by your body and blood, may we be strengthened to be your people, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We have just a few announcements before we scatter today. To be God's hand and feet in the world. We have uh, the last Messiah night pickup this 
Wednesday. We want to give thanks for all of our Messiah Night volunteers and people that have made this a good ministry, uh, a pandemic ministry. One of the one of the neat things that's come out of this year and a half uh, that, that we've had in the midst of this. Uh, we I cannot tell you the amount of joy we've, we've brought to our neighbors uh, through this Messiah Night pickup, and it's all because of uh, volunteers led by uh, Chef Marty and by uh, our fellowship or our outreach chair Suzanne Schmant. So good, good work. Um, and it'll be over this Wednesday, and then we'll resume uh, after Labor Day. So a summer break. Uh, Wednesday this week, the adult study is canceled that I lead at one o'clock. So just a, a heads up. I see some of those people that are pretty faithful at that class. Uh, I, I, I didn't realize that my calendar does not allow me to be there this Wednesday at 1 o'clock, so I, uh, I would have announced that last week if I would have known that. Uh, next Sunday is Pentecost. Next Sunday is Pentecost, so wear red. That's fun to do on Pentecost and Reformation Sunday, so uh, find that favorite red outfit. Larry is already ahead of us right here in the front row. Uh, and... Um, and, and uh, Tyler and uh, I are, are putting together a good festival day in, in the midst of Pentecost. Uh, so be uh, ready for that uh, launch uh, into, uh, into this Holy Spirit goodness. The hard food drive is going on right now. I saw some people bring in some food when they came in. Uh, bring in any sort of food you want to share with the, with the pantry. Uh, anything you bring in helps add variety to the shelves at Heart. Uh, because they sometimes, you know, just have green beans, because that's all the Mid-Ohio Food Bank had. And, and so your canned vegetables uh, give some variety to that. Uh, they're emphasizing snacks, healthy snacks for kids, but any, any good gift is fine. And we're going to end that next week on Pentecost Sunday, so continue to bring that in. Uh, I would like to start having some fellowship after worship. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to do it until I have a leader that's going to help me do it. Um, so I, I need someone just to, to, to give me a call or send me an email and, and, and help me gather volunteers and, and set, up, uh, set up how we'll do it uh, from now throughout the summer and, and those sort of things. So if anyone wants to do that, that would be wonderful. It would be a good gift for our congregation. Uh, we have... Um, <laughs> uh, we, we did a funeral on, for Barb on, Wednesday, on Friday and... Uh, and it was right after the CDC announced that, that we don't no longer need to wear masks if we're vaccinated inside. And so, so we were standing at the doors telling everybody the bad news that we're still wearing masks in here. Uh, um, and, um, you know, it's just a reminder that we're all anxious for all this to be over. Uh, council is going to have a, a, an emergency meeting tomorrow. An emergency just because it's out of the normal second Tuesday of the month sort of thing. Uh, but they are going to have a meeting tomorrow to, to kind of figure out a way forward that, 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 uh, it, with what Governor DeWine's doing and what the CDC's doing and, and what we think we need to do. You know, I will remind you uh, that many people have faithfully uh, tried to get a vaccine and, and, and just uh, received it recently. I think Tyler himself just received the second shot this week, right, Tyler? So, you know, so we're, people are still in the midst of, of, of getting vaccinated and being safe. And so we want to be we want to be careful around our neighbors uh, as we go forward. So so but we will make some changes we'll, we'll, and we'll announce some we'll announce a timetable for some of those changes as best we can see it. And you'll see that probably in a, uh, an email blast that'll come out, um, you know, later in the week. So, uh, so keep your eyes open for all that. Um, and I appreciate your patience as we continue, as we continue down this crazy road, huh? Um, keeping people safe. Uh, I think that's everything I have written down for announcements. Uh, Teresa Newell in the back asked me about mulch. You can still take mulch, throw it in your, throw it in your van. The reason we have so many, uh, just for your gee whiz fact, is that Ohio mulch, uh, pressured us into getting four extra skids of mulch in order to get the bargain price that they were giving us so we could sell it. And we ended up with four extra skids <laughs> of mulch that we're, that, that we're struggling to get rid of at this point. So, um, uh, so anything you can do to help out with that, uh, just put an envelope in that box, that, you know, with the amount of money and, and mark it clearly for youth mulch and it'll get in the right bucket and, 
and that's all you have to do. I'm not sure what's back there, honestly, um, other than it looks like two and a half skids uh, <laughs> of, of mulch. So there you go. Why don't you stand? Hallelujah. Christ is risen. You know, that's going to be the last time you get to say that. Isn't that too bad? Isn't that a fun way? We should, we should have that all year round. It's just so fun to start the, start the day and end the day. And, and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen.